Yeah, hi. Is this PMC? Perfect. Um, could I talk to someone in the naming department? Yeah, I think someone is a bit confused. All right, we just got the PMC 6262268222 result 6282626 What's going on PMC? All right, we've got the new PMC 6. It's a two-way near-field monitor with a six-inch mid-bass driver, as they call it, and a one-inch tweeter. They both have a 200-watt amp, so that's a lot of power for a small tweeter. And they feature the famous BMC ATL, the Advanced Transmission Line, which basically is a labyrinth through the speaker that ends up here, and that adds a feature called bass loading, and that gives a super Port under 200 hertz to the speaker so this actually is going to function as another low-end driver i really like the honeycomb design on the end of the atl it's beautiful and it also comes back on this strip this tweeter strip with the logo there and the six because it's pmc six um they got really handy brackets here and there on all sides so if you have a Dolby Atmos system or are thinking of setting it up in a Dolby Atmos system, they sell the brackets with it and you can hook them up really nicely and uh, mount them really nicely on the ceiling. Look how strong I am. Why? No, they're not, they're not that heavy. They're heavier than the 226, but they're not heavy heavy. So that's also great if you want to mount them to the ceiling that you don't have to do any structural stuff to it. A couple design features I really like are them getting rid of the feet. The 226 have rubber feet on all of the corners and that's just really annoying. Uh, it not only looks ugly but also you can see this one over here. Uh, that's on a speaker shelf right now and there's one of the feet is on the speaker shelf and the other three are not on the speaker shelf and it just becomes this weird thing and it's wobbly and it's just not nice. This is just flat. You can put it flat on a speaker shelf, on your stand or your uh, desk, anywhere, and it looks way, 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 way nicer. Um, another thing I really like is that there's no dust cap on the mid-bass driver. It's still a weird word for me, mid-bass driver, but there's no dust cap, which design-wise is really nice. And a thing that I liked on the 226 is that they have the tweeter guard. They don't have that anymore on here. I like that because I'm running a commercial studio and people can poke the tweeter and I mean, yeah. It is probably something audio technical that uh, the tweeter just sounds better if there's nothing in front of it, if there's nothing blocking it. Um, but yeah, safety-wise and keeping them in great condition, I like that feature about the 226. But yeah, we'll be fine. Before we continue, it would mean a lot to me if you could like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so you always stay up to date when I post a new video. These are my trusted BMC 226s. I've had them for three years now. I've had a long, long, long search for the right monitor for me. I tried Amphions, Neumann KH310s, Foca SM9s, uh, ATC SEM20s, and a lot more. I eventually ended up with BMCs. Uh, I tried the Result 6s first, but I felt I needed a bit of a step up, so I decided to try the 226s. I immediately liked the detail and the frequency response on these. They've got nice extended highs and sufficient lows. And over the years, I've really learned to work with them. I know them inside out, but that also means that I know what I don't like about them. 
and what their downsides are. One of the things I feel could be improved about the 226 is their high mids. I feel their high mids are a bit too forgiving. When I'm dealing with manual de-essing or uh, harshness in mixes, I feel I can push these further than I should be able to. So it's not, they stay too soft on the high mids and the highs. And I want something to actually reveal to me the second something becomes too harsh, that it's too harsh. So that's something I've been struggling with, really getting to know that. And another thing is when you put them on a desk like the SSL behind me, they tend to get a bump in the low mids, which could be why they added a desk filter to the PMC6, which is a 3.5 dB cut at 150 Hz. So that could really fix that problem. Because I have both, we can really easily compare. Uh, let's start with the PMC6. We've got the power connector and the power switch because you need power. We've got the network connector. That is only for sound line, as far as I know. As far as I know, there's no other stuff going on on that network connector. Um, then we've got an expansion port, which I hope will be for Dante. So you can have an entire system of these speakers uh, all fed through Dante. That would be great. Uh, then another nice feature they give you is the analog and digital in the AES in are now on the same XLR input connector and they give you a digital AES output as well for if you want to daisy chain to another BMC 6 or 6.2 or 8 or 8.2 or some of the other names. On the older model, the 226, you get the analog in and the digital in separately and an unbalanced analog in and you get an ethernet in and through and that allowed you to feed the output audio from the AES connector so daisy chain this speaker to another 226 and feed uh, audio and the volume control through this connector and have this connector hooked up to their PMC volume controller. So that way you could set up your system. The controls on here are way better than the 226 because now it's really easy. You've got one parameter controller and one value controller and you can just dial that in. And then if you do level trim, if you push up the val value, it goes up by steps of 0.1 dB, but if you press the button, small asterisk appears, and then you can go entire decibel steps, which is great, because then you don't have to do this all the time. You just easily go like that. On here, the 226, the menu is a nightmare. You have to press to the right, and then, oh wait, that's set up, and then, okay, then I can go, oh, nay, oh, whoa. Hated that. So, way to go, PMC. Way better. One of my favorite features about the PMC6 is something called Soundaline. It basically allows you to hook up your speakers to your computer, uh, type in your IP address in your browser, and go to a web page that has all the settings for your speakers, so you don't have to fiddle with all the settings on the back. That way you can hook up everything to each other. And you can also hook them up to your Wi-Fi router, and just control your speakers from your phone, which is just a really cool feature. If you want to uh, use Soundaline with your PMC6, it's really easy. You just plug in the Ethernet cable, uh, type in the IP address you see on the back of the PMC6. You go there in any browser and you see this screen. So over here, you've got the groups, uh, you've got, you can make up to five groups uh, and you can assign where they're located, if they're left, center, right, rear, surround, left, surround. Uh, and that way you can link these settings. So if you want to delay, compensate uh, your left back and right back, you can do it uh, at the same time together. They've got the model with the IP address and the firmware expansion card 
subfilter. Then you've got the input source. It's either analog or AES. You can switch between left, right, or left and right. The level trim and the analog in max. You can switch the positioning. So if it's free space, which is just on a stand uh, or on a desk a bit further from the wall, uh, you've got the wall if it's really close to a uh, back wall and you've got the corner. You've got the desk filter which is a 3.5 dB cut on a Q of 3 at 150 Hertz and you've got the orientation. You can set the orientation to portrait or landscape. Portrait is vertical, landscape is horizontal and if you set it to auto it will automatically figure out what setting it is and depending on the orientation of your speaker it will adjust the crossover settings. Then we've got a sub high pass low pass filter. Uh, you can set the frequency there and set it to active or not. Then the delay compensation for if you've got a big Atmos system and you need to align all the speakers. And you can also phase invert a speaker. Then we go to the second tab, which has a low shelf and a high shelf, and one and two uh, PEQs, and three, four, five on the other side. So you've got five bells and two shelves. As you can see on the first bell, I recreated the desk filter because I wanted to have a bit of that desk filter, but the desk filter as it was set by default was too much for me. So I only did 1.5 dB with a Q of two. So that's that. Something I feel they could have improved on the PMC6 is a secondary ethernet connector. Because now you have to really get a switch or a router and uh, hook up your computer to that switch and then go to speaker one and speaker two with two different cables. It would have been way nicer if we could have gone from our computer to speaker one and then daisy chain to speaker two and maybe the rest. Because if you have an entire Atmos system and you have to run independent cables from a central point to every speaker, that's a nightmare. If you could just go from your computer to speaker one and then daisy chain throughout the entire system, that would have been amazing. That would have been so much easier. And then the second thing I think would make it even better is, I don't know if this is even possible uh, technically, because maybe the interference would be too much for the speaker, but if it could have some type of Wi-Fi capability. I don't know if that is something for the option card that you're going for Wi-Fi capability uh, together with Dante. I'm just assuming there's going to be Dante because that's the most logical. But maybe you're also adding a Wi-Fi option card. Uh, but that would just make so much more sense uh, unless that is technically impossible. <laughs>the moment we've all been waiting for. How do the PMC6 compare to the 226 sound-wise? I personally think they are a great improvement. Uh, the things that I don't like about the 226, they fixed in the PMC6. They've got extended high-end, extended low-end. The low-end is really solid, really clean. The high-end is really solid. The high-mids I didn't like about the 226 is a bit better. It's also more revealing. Uh, the mids in general are more revealing in the BMC6s. I noticed that I was listening to one of the mixes I did and I got annoyed by one of the delays I put into the song. I didn't hear that on the 226s, but the BMC6s were that much more revealing that it just drove me nuts and I wanted to go back into the mix and fix it again. Then you've got the desk filter, which is really great because they still have that low mid bump, uh, but now you can take that down. And if you don't like the desk filter, for instance, when I put them up at first, I felt they were holding back too much, but that was just the desk filter taking out too much of the low mids. Um, so we recreated that desk filter and instead of 
taking down three and a half dB, I took out one and a half dB. So that's really great that you have that seven band EQ for that versatility and shaping them to how you want them to sound. Let's wrap it up and let's do a little recap of what's what. Let's start with the 226. It has a low and a high shelf where the BMC6 has a low shelf, a high shelf, and five parametric EQ points. The 226 has a fixed crossover where the BMC6 has an adaptive crossover that switches when you switch the orientation from portrait to landscape mode. An interesting difference between the two is that the 226 only needs 20 hours of burning in and the BMC6 needs 50 which is a lot. A big improvement on the PMC6 is the rotary knobs on the back. It makes finding your way in the menu so much easier than on the 226. The 226 with the arrows is horrible. I could never find my way in the menus. And now you just get rotary knobs that just, it just works nice. And especially with sound align, you don't even have to use them, but if you have to use them, the rotary knobs are just Perfect. The amplification on them is a bit different. The 226 has 150 watts on the lows and 50 watts on the highs, where the BMC6 has two 200 watt amps. I really like the combined AES and analog input on the BMC6 and having the AES daisy chain output. Uh, on the PMC 226 it was a bit different, you had analog and digital separately, no AES output, but you had the uh, Ethernet through, so you could hook up a controller to the one PMC and link it uh, in audio and volume control to another uh, slave monitor 226. I would have liked it somewhere in between, I would have seen the options on the PMC6, but with a daisy chain ethernet port as well. There are a couple of features that the PMC6 has that the 226 doesn't have. And one of them is sound align. Being able to sit behind your computer and just dial in your speakers is great. Another one is being able to delay compensate the speakers, which is great if you're doing an Atmos system and you've got your back speakers far back and you just want to delay them or you want to delay the front speakers because then they would be in phase with the speakers in the back. All of that capability is amazing. It's great that they have a built-in desk filter which you can just engage and see if it works or not and if it's doing too much you can just dial in the EQ and shape it to your liking. And last but not least the expansion slot. I am really excited about this expansion slot. I'm really curious what they will be doing with this expansion slot. I'm almost sure they will fit it with Dante. Hopefully some Wi-Fi module as well. Maybe some more. If you have any ideas, any suggestions, post them down below. I'm really curious what you think. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this review of the PMC 6 and 226 that way um, like comment subscribe hit the bell icon all that YouTube stuff uh, and let me know down in the comments if you want me to do more reviews or whatever content you would like to see me create and I'll think about it see you on the next one